What if I gave you a binary with this piece of code and asked you to solve it? Sounds really complicated, right? Introducing Z3. An amazing SMT solver that you can use to solve this and similar problem in seconds. Satisfiability modulo theories solvers are one of the most interesting topics to learn about in computer science. When you first discover them, they feel surprising and magical. You might already have heard of or seen someone use a SMT solver like Z3 for solving CTF challenges, and by the end of this video, you'll have a good grasp of all the required knowledge to get started and use Z3. SMT solvers leverage the powers of another type of solvers called Boolean satisfiability problem solvers, aka SAT solvers. As the name suggests, they have something to do with Boolean variables. These solvers basically take a Boolean expression and output whether there are possible values for the Boolean variables which result in the expression being true or satisfiable. When there are no such variables, SAT solver outputs unsatisfiable. If the expression is satisfiable, then the SAT solver can also output the values for the variables which satisfy the expression. Satisfiability modulo theory solvers essentially combine the powers of SAT solvers and some other solvers. SMT solvers like SAT are able to find not only the satisfiability, but also the satisfying inputs for Boolean expressions, but they are not limited to just Boolean expressions. SMT solvers are capable of other inputs such as integer, arrays, and arithmetic operations. Let's learn few terms that you'll need to know when navigating through the SMT solver territory. Concrete values are simply constant values. For example, 5 is a concrete value. It's that simple. Symbolic values are like the unknown variables which you have when dealing with an algebraic expression. These are have are used to represent values which are not yet known. For example, in this expression, x and y are symbolic values. Now let's talk about symbolic execution. This is a technique which essentially reduces the conditions inside given program into mathematical equations and tries to solve them using SMT and SAT solvers. Instead of just theoretical explanation, let us look at an example in order to understand the, the essence of symbolic execution. Consider this C program. It takes a concrete input from the user and stores it into J, then creates another variable called k and saves two times j into it, and then it checks if k is greater than zero. If it is then, it checks if two times k is equal to eight. If it is then, it prints correct input. This was an example of concrete execution, meaning the type of execution in which a concrete input is given to see the behavior of the program. This is what will happen if the program was executed symbolically. The variable j will be assigned a symbolic value, let's say gamma. Next, the variable k will be assigned two times gamma. At the if statement, the symbolic execution engine will remember the condition as a constraint that is 2 times gamma, which is k, is greater than 0 and execute the if branch, and at the same time remember the else branch, and add its constraint that is 2 times gamma is smaller than 0, and execute that too symbolically with a copy of the program's current state, just like what the if branch has, except with a different constraint. The path that the if branch takes has another if condition whose constraint, which is 2 times gamma times 2, which is k times 2, is equal to 8, is again remembered along with the existing constraint. Gamma times 2 is greater than 0, and also symbolically executes the else branch at the same time with the opposite constraints. The if branch then proceeds and executes the code which essentially leads the program to exit normally after printing correct input. The symbolic execution engine then solves the remembered constraints which are 2 times gamma is greater than 0, and 2 times gamma times 2 is equal to 8. These constraints are then solved by the SMT solver engine and it outputs all the possible values for each constraints with the paths they lead to. If we assume that our goal in this program was to reach the path where it says correct input, we would just input 2 in order to get there. Uh, I'm sure by now you'll be thinking that it took a single integer input. And what about more complex programs which take string inputs, etc? Well that is also possible, but it would have been quite hard to express in a video, so I'm not covering those here. All of us have seen those social media posts where it's a math puzzle type question, which states that 99% people fail at solving them. I'm not sure about the source of this statistic, but what I'm sure about is that you'll be capable of solving those problems in seconds after learning about Z3, which is what we'll do in this part of the video, and learn how this relates with symbolic execution later. This is one such graphic with a question. I redesigned the original problem so it looks nice. So square times square plus circle is equal to 16. Okay, then triangle times triangle times triangle is equal to 27. Okay, next is triangle times square is 6. And we have to find square times circle times triangle. All right. As Albert Einstein would like to say, quote, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about solutions, end quote. 
So we would follow his advice and spend time with the question first. We can start by rewriting the problem into a symbolic form. Three things are clear after looking at the problem. One, there are three unknown variables, square, circle, and triangle. Two, there are four arithmetic expressions out of which three have known concrete output values, and one's output is unknown which we have to find. Three, all three unknown variables hold integer values. These three known concrete values of the expressions of these unknown values are essentially the constraints required to reach the required values for square, circle, and triangle. If you do not understand this right now, you'll get it soon. Now, let's start solving this problem with the help of Z3. Start by installing Z3 with the following command. First, I put the question just above so we can refer to it easily. Let's import everything from Z3 to make our work easier. The next thing we'll do is define our unknown values as symbolic variables using the int method from Z3. Do this for all three variables. Now let's define the solver object. This will help us add constraints to the solver. We can now add the constraints by using the add method. I've just copy pasted it. Also, remember to use double equal twos while adding the constraints. Now, add the other two. Now, after we have defined the constraints, there are two ways in which we can get the result from Z3. The first one is the easy and dirty way. First, we call the check method as it's required. And then we would print solver.model. Here, the model contains the inputs which satisfy our given constraints. When we run this code, we get the following output. As stated before, it contains the required values for circle, triangle, and square, which satisfy these constraints. If we zoom in and see, the concrete solution value for circle is 12, triangle is 3, and square is 2. The first thing we do to make this better is to verify the return value of the check method. This method returns sat, meaning satisfiable when the input constraints are satisfiable. Then we can save the model object in a variable which we can later use to get the values of each symbol. Now we can convert the values of these symbols to ints by calling the evil method on the model and then calling the aslong method to get it. Now since we have the int values for the variables, we can now multiply them as asked and print the values. Now let's run the program, and here we go. 72 is the answer to our required question with these constraints. And now you have become the 1%, the destroyer of all Facebook math challenges. Now look at this. A function written in C that takes three arguments square, circle, and triangle. It then checks a few conditions on these values. And if they are satisfied, it calls the win function. Do you also think that this is familiar? I'm sure you guessed it correctly. It's the same problem as before, just in the form of a C function. And what this teaches us is that the way to approach problems which involve symbolic execution is not so much about in what context the problem exists. It is much more related to how you reframe the problem and reduce it into simple constraints that you can add to an engine like Z3 and solve it. In this problem, for example, the same solution that we wrote for the visual problem is valid for the code example. It would just not require the values of the last multiplication that is in the question.